All right. Okay. Today, we are back with another Attack on Titan reaction video. Jordan, we are on episode number 15 of season four. Yes, sir. And boy, oh boy, what a heartbreaking past few episodes. Yeah. I think it's safe to say we didn't see that coming. No. What happened with Levi and the beast out in the forest and what happened between Mikasa That's what I'm talking about. and Aaron. Yeah. And what happened between Nicolo, Mr. Browse, Gabby, Falco, and Flock. And the list goes on. So yeah. much happened that we did not see coming our way. Yeah. And sometimes it just lines up that way, right? Because as the people know, we record in batches of three. Yeah. So when we have three episodes that are like that, I mean, we walk out of this studio feeling completely defeated. Yeah, we walk out with a bottle of wine. Yeah. <laughs> Which one of our patrons <laughs> commented in and told us that they actually sell wine with the Marleyan label on oh it. Oh my gosh. In Japan. In Japan. How great of a gift would that be yeah. for someone who loves this show? Yeah. That bottle of wine shows up at your door. You drinking it? Hell no. <laughs> right? I mean, there's part of you that would be skeptical of it. I mean, you don't know what type of games people try to play nowadays. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> they lace it with anything. You'd be asleep for three oh, days. Oh, boy. All right. Anyway, brother. How are we going to start this? You want to begin with a discussion? Let's do that, man. Okay. Let's do that. So I can't remember who went first last time. I cannot remember either. All right. You want to go first? You got it. All right. Okay. So... Beginning with some notes from episode 12, that was Guides, right? I believe the title of that was Guides. Oh, I think so, yeah. Um, it makes so much more sense now why Armin was talking to Annie. Oh, yes. Right? When we first saw those scenes, we're like, what is happening here? Yeah. Why is he talking to Annie in, in the crystal? Um, he was sort of compelled there via Bertolt's memories. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. I didn't think about that. Um, and then one of my favorite quotes from this entire series so far came from episode 12 when Pixis was talking to Yelena mm -hmm. and said, but first, a word of advice about telling a lie. To make it good, you need to mix in at least a pinch of the truth. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> yeah. Pixis has got that wisdom. Oh my gosh. How many lies has Pixis told in his lifetime? Mm-hmm. That was brilliant. Yeah. Um, Mikasa and Armin came so close, Jordan, to being blown up in Zachary's office. Uh, and after seeing the confrontation between Aaron, Armin, and Mikasa, it makes me wonder if that were to have happened, would Aaron have had any regret or remorse yeah. if they died? Right. I know we touched on that a bit. Yeah. In that episode, but rewatching it, right? They came yeah. closer than it initially seemed. Yeah. Yeah, they were right there, man. Um, and then with this new term, the Jaegerists, mm. uh, I don't think I will ever view the term Jaeger bombs <sighs> the same now. <laughs> That's a drink, right? I believe so. I mean, not that we drink really much at all. Yeah. But I know. In college, especially, we would hear the term Jaeger bomb, Jaeger bomb. Mm. Like, what? I want nothing to do with a Jaeger bomb. And now I want absolutely nothing to do with a Jaeger bomb. What about red wine? Is red wine still safe for you? I prefer white, but. Really? Now. Now. Okay. <laughs> I'm still drinking red wine. All right. Uh, now, some notes from episode 13. Uh, this was one of the most twisted and tense episodes in the series so far. Yeah. Uh, seeing Falco and Gabby come to the re realization that Gabby killed Sasha, mm. and then seeing Nicolo, Kaya, and Sasha's parents come to the same exact realization. Right? It was like a, a 
the realization kept bouncing back and forth. Yeah. Like, uh, 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 mm. crazy. It's like the, uh, that game in the arcades. Yeah. Where you pull the little thing ah. and the ball just bounces, bounces, bounces. Ah, and then nice. it lands. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Um, Gabby's tone when speaking with Niccolo before everyone was having their realizations was fascinating. Mm. Uh, basically a tone of like, you know, we're on the same side. Yeah. I'm a warrior candidate. And look what good deed I've done by killing Sasha. Right. Right. And almost like I'm looking out for you, Niccolo. Yeah. Right. Just wait. Just wait. You're going to be OK. Mm -hmm. And then boy, oh boy, how things turned. That's a great point. And one of our patrons described that moment from Falco's perspective Ooh. and talked about because there was a there was a split second where Falco was trying to actually stop Gabby ah, from yeah. revealing that. Yeah, because Falco knows and our patron, I forget uh, who it was, but we'll try to find it and put it on the screen. Our patron was talking about how Falco has such a high level of emotional like a, intelligence, emotional intelligence, his ability to listen yep. and understand people that he knew. Gabby, you don't want to say that. Yeah. Not in this moment. Yeah. And then I believe they said, if only more people could be like Falco. I really, really like his character. Yeah. But that's a great point. Yeah. All right. Great comment. Um, and then Sasha's father, just a quote that stuck out. And I know one of our patrons touched upon it as well. Mm. He said, we got to get these children out of that forest. Oh, yeah. Woo! Yeah. That hit so hard. Mm. Right, that man is just, and obviously we talked about it, our patrons talked about it. That man is the epitome of genuine love and humanity. Yeah. Crazy. And that Southern Marlian accent yeah. makes him husband material oh. for a lot of people out there, I'm sure. All right, uh, and then there was a moment which stuck out to me uh, when Levi put his hand on his head, right? and. Mm. It, I believe he thought, you know, he was going through his previous thoughts, you know, that Aaron was the best hope that humanity had and that he feels like it's, he's the brunt of a joke now. Mm. Um, that was one of the first times where we've seen Levi come close to s some sort of emotional or mental breakdown. Mm. He didn't. Yeah. He held it together because we saw what he, what he did right after that. But that was such an interesting moment where Levi felt things crashing down on him. Like, oh no, oh no. But then he snapped right back to it. Yeah. Yeah. Was that the moment where he was thinking about the wine they let in as well? Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. was a mini crisis. He deals with crisis better than any character in this show. I'd say that. Yeah. His ability to just cope in the moment. Yeah. But he keeps losing squads, man. Yeah, and this was a massive loss. Yeah, thirty people. Um, so that was interesting. And then Flock, <laughs> Ugh. he said, and I don't know if you caught this. He said, "Sounds like those idiot MPs are going to become even bigger idiots from drinking the wine." Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like what, Flock? You son of a mother, Flock. I know. I know. You son of a mother, Flocker. <laughs> Uh, and then his grin, when he turned back around, he's like this. Yeah. I don't know how you felt uh, on the rewatch, Jarn, but uh, I felt immense anger and hatred for Flock in that moment. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously he forces the trainees to beat up Ugh. Shadis. Shadis. Oh, cruel. And again, remember him on the rooftop. Oh, yeah. With Irwin. Yeah. We can draw a line from that day to this point right here where his character has just changed significantly. Mm. And I don't know if that moment was like the the spark of him just going rogue and going off. Yeah. But he is a completely different character now. Yeah. Um, and then just a few points from episode 14. Uh, Aaron Jorn said, I am free. Everything I've ever done has been due to my own free will. <laughs> and I wonder if this is true, right? Given that he has three titans inside of him. Yeah. 
part of him has to be guided by at least one of these titans memories there's no way he's fully free right like he just with a straight face told armin yeah <laughs> that he's being controlled by bertolt's memory right and by the enemy in a sense but like you just said he himself has multiple titans within him yeah so it's yeah that was interesting uh and then the single most heartbreaking line of this entire show the entire show the single most heartbreaking line that i've heard came in episode 14 when aaron said believe me when i say this mikasa <laughs> ever since i was a kid i've hated hated you Aaron didn't say, ever since I was a kid, I, I haven't loved you. Hmm. He said, ever since I was a kid, I've hated you. I have no way to describe that. Do you? Um, confused. I, I think it's deeper than that. No, I'm talking about how I feel. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're not saying Aaron is confused. No, I w I'm not going to try to characterize Aaron at this okay. point until the end of this show. Yeah. But how, how do you feel and how would you characterize our guy, Aaron? Uh, I mean, that line right there broke my heart for Mikasa. Yeah. Right? I know she is dealing with this Ackerman power that she possesses, but still, like, you can tell that, uh, you can tell she really loves Aaron yeah man and that uh, i don't know where it'll go from here but um and then just a few more points jordan aaron he mentioned how he's going to take them where it all started shigenshin like, back to shigenshina yeah so we'll see what happens yeah final point levi the mother flocking goat Ooh, i like how you said mother flocking I know we are only in the middle of our first three anime series, but uh, maybe the people can, can let us know. I feel like what Levi did may have been the greatest anime battle or slashing of all time. Levi versus 30 plus pure titans and the beast. Pure titans who were his comrades a minute ago yes you might have an argument to be made Jude. and levi said did you think i wouldn't kill my comrades yeah. if they turned into titans you don't have a damn clue how many comrades i've killed yeah okay yeah all right and then just final point this sovereign guy oh yeah the very last scene yeah he said hey zeke Ever think about playing ball when you grow up? And Zeke said, or thought, I'm sorry, but I can't, Mr. Xaver. I have a mission. I have a mission. Okay. I want to hear what you had to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. Jared, Mr. Xaver, I hope we're going to learn more about him. Because it seems like he had an influence on Zeke as a child. Yeah. And... From what we've seen, we know that Zeke didn't have an ordinary childhood. Right. I don't think any character in this show has an ordinary childhood, but Zeke's parents, Grisha and his mother, Dinah, it's them. He ratted them out. Yeah. So I know his grandparents played a, a role in raising him, but Mr. Saver, I don't know if he's the one who introduced the game of baseball to him mm -hmm. or what, but seems like from that last scene he uh he had a strong connection with him yeah okay great points man great points you pretty much nailed everything from the past couple episodes let me try to see if i can add anything else okay so from episode 71 flock i believe when he was talking to aaron was talking about how there are other soldiers other Jaegerists yep. who are hiding in the military. So I'm interested to learn who else 
identifies as a Jaegerist and is hiding in the military mm. in plain sight. Yeah. Um, we saw how Peak has infiltrated parody. Has anybody else infiltrated parody? Seems like that's the that's the move. That's how you get in. Yeah. On both sides, right? Aaron, Jean, as we'll read. Um, like that's how you get in. You infiltrate the territory without anybody knowing. Yeah. The gas weapon. This was from episode number seventy-two. The gas weapon that Zeke talked about and how his spinal fluid was in it and how it only takes a small amount inhaling a small amount to make any subject of Ymir freeze up lose control of their bodies and then fall unconscious and then he talked about how it also etches a coordinate inside of them that Zeke sends the power of the titans directly to and according to him this is why the people of Ragako transformed into obedient titans now, I don't know if he's telling the truth or not, right, right. but that was fascinating to see, the use of a gas weapon. We know the wine is for real, right? We saw that in action, that his spinal fluid can be infused in red wine. Yeah. But I'm interested to see if we'll learn more about this gas weapon. Yep. Um, a scene that really sort of touched my heart was when Nicolo saved Jean and mm. I think one other person, Connie it may have been, from drinking the wine. Yes. And directly after that, he, he used the excuse essentially that this wine's too good for Eldians, mm. right? To sort of cover himself. Yep. So I'm really liking his character because he didn't have to do that, right? He didn't have to save Jean, yeah. an Eldian, Connie an Eldian from that. Yeah. It was just those touching moments of compassion in a show full full of just heartbreak, gore, and death. Yeah. Those moments of compassion stand out. Yeah. And there were so many. I think we're going to go through some of them in these comments um, over the past couple episodes. Yeah, great point. And I love those moments because it, it shows you that these characters are humans, right? And they're yeah. just thrown into the middle of all this chaos. Yeah. You know, and they don't know what to think. So, I, yeah, I really like Niccolo's character as well. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see what else. From episode number 72, I wrote down that probably the most powerful secret weapon you can use is spinal fluid wine. Mm. Yeah. Because, Jared, what soldier is not going to want to drink some wine? You could ship it to any nation. Any nation. Yeah, you'll have some Levi's who think, second guess it, yeah. and talk about, no, we got tea, which was an interesting line from him that uh, stood out on the rewatch. We got tea, but then he <laughs> gave in anyway. Um, so spinal fluid wine, that's a masterful secret weapon. You talked about Levi. Levi seems superhuman at certain mm -hmm. times, man. And when he slaughtered his own comrades, because he had to, because they transformed into Titans, and then he took the beast hostage are you si after Oof. after everything that we just saw go down jared seeing zeke lay there as he's chopping his limbs off levi ackerman is indeed the goat levi superman levi batman levi spider-man levi freaking iron man yeah. all in one yeah that's what you get levi ackerman i'll end with one final quote from Yelena that stood out to me. I think it was during the discussion with Pixis. Yelena said, very soon, two brothers will reshape the whole world. Yeah. And that was eerie as hell hearing those words come out of her mouth. Yeah. Very soon, two brothers will reshape the world. Yeah. And it sort of feels like we're inching closer to something of that nature. Because some people believe Aaron is being manipulated by Zeke. Aaron doesn't believe that to be the case, it seems. But we as the audience don't know the full truth yet. Right. So it's a little frustrating. It's like, okay, if Armin and Mikasa can't get through to Aaron, nobody can. But what's going to happen 
is he going to be able to be stopped or are we going to see massive bloodshed at a level we haven't seen up to this point yeah so it's just a little concerning yeah great points um yelena right i know she was previously described as a devout follower of zeke yeah now she seems like she's a devout follower of zeke and aaron yeah which is very interesting yeah she's an interesting character yeah all right man uh we have a a few comments here from our wonderful patrons so i think they can fill us in on anything else we didn't touch on all right so let's read our first one from l fire spray all right so the first comment comes to us from l fire spray and l writes yep you're correct that was peak side note I love the interactions between Hanji and Anyang Kompo. Mm. Sometimes I feel like he's the new Moblit. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like Hanji needs to have a sidekick. Yeah. And these two characters fit that role. Yeah. Uh, L continues, in the last episode, the warriors in Marley were discussing with Magith how they couldn't wait six months to attack Parody again. They said they had no time to waste. So it makes sense that we see Peak Finger as a spy, just like we saw Jean with a newspaper and a hat spying in Marley in the first episodes of season four, walking down the street. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember seeing Jean for the first time and we had no idea. We didn't know that was Jean. Right. Yeah. So it seems like they're infiltrating both sides mm -hmm. are very well yep so that was yeah great comment l yeah thank you l jared what you think about our guy onyanko pon mm, onyanko pon i'm conflicted do you believe him when he says that he had no knowledge of a lot of the things that he claims to have no knowledge of i don't believe anybody anymore yeah no no knowledge about yelena meeting with aaron I don't know. I want to believe him. He's such a sweet guy, but yeah. you can't trust the soul. Right. And if I were Hanji, I would be incredibly cautious and careful. Yeah. Right. Uh, if you're Hanji, I don't think you can just rely on your intuition. No. Right? Wanting to believe on Yoko, on Yankompo. Yeah. Pon. On Yankompo. On Yankopon. On Yonko. Is it On Yankopon or On Yankopon? On Yankopon. Yeah, we'll go with that. Okay. All right, Hanji's got to be careful. That's true. All right, thank you so much, L. We have another comment here from our guy, Siddharth Gidu. And Siddharth writes, Season 4, Episode 12 has another full circle moment. The Jaegerists are doing a coup and overthrowing the current government, similar to how Erwin organized a coup against the government back in Season 3. In both cases, the reason for the coup was that the ruling government was too pacifist. The government in season three wanted the people on parody to live in fear of the titans even going so far as attempting to transfer the founding titan aaron back to someone of royal blood historia to prevent the scout regiment from exterminating the titans now in season four the government does not want parody island to attack other nations and instead favors a more diplomatic approach zachary even contemplated transferring the founding titan aaron to someone more trustworthy notice the parallel we definitely notice the parallel yeah. Sadar. Sadar's great at drawing these parallels <laughs> for us uh, this is great Sadar continues the differences between the two coups is that Irwin's coup was bloodless whereas this coup clearly isn't also we the audience all sided with Irwin and the scouts back in season three but now in season four do we the audience side with the Jaegerists it's a complicated decision right if parody island goes on the offensive and attacks the rest of the world it sh it will surely invite retaliation and the cycle of violence will just continue as we know marley is already planning an offensive on parody because of what happened in liberio but on the other hand how can we be confident that diplomacy will work yeah. these are the important questions Sadar. can you really reason with people who wish you all dead mm. As Kiyomi said in episode 10, the world wants Parody Island to be the root of all evil because it brings the rest of the world together. I remember her saying that. And as Aaron said in episode 9, the rest of the world sees us as monsters who can turn into titans. They aren't wrong. 
So in order to protect ourselves, we have to keep them, the rest of the world, at bay. Season four does a terrific job of illustrating the morality or the morally gray nature of people and of the world as a whole. And this coup is just another example of that. Hmm. Siddhartha, thank you for turning in your research paper. You get a <laughs> 100, A plus. Absolutely. For the win. Absolutely. And you, Siddhartha used detail, used examples. Right. You know what, Siddharth, we're gonna, we're gonna use this as an example essay. Well, for your comrades and peers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I take that back, not a 100, I'm gonna have oh. to go with a 99. Why? Siddharth did not indent. Ah. That's it, that's the only thing Siddharth forgot to do here. All right, all right. So 99, still an A plus, but um, yeah. And, I, and I don't see any sources. Siddharth didn't cite <laughs> their sources. Oh, shoot. I also don't see a title. Oh, snap. Or a hair. They also like justified text. Oh, uh, you know what that is? I've, I think I do. Oh, okay. yeah. Where it's, you make everything straight on the, yeah. on the edge. We're just playing with you, Siddharth. You pass. Yeah, thank you so much, man, for this wonderful comment yeah. and your brilliant insight. Again, Jordan, I'm going to sound like a broken record. This show parallels our current world yeah. so freaking much Oof. right where you have different allies and foes at one time right and then it switches other nations become your ally other nations become your foe mm. right just a whole mess of complicated foreign relations yeah yeah, great point. And I think at this time, at least, the only ally that parody seems to have are the Hizuru people. Yeah. And again, they're out for what they want. Exactly. Money, resources. So it's every man for himself out there, man. Yeah. Every man for himself. All right. Appreciate you, Siddharth. Keep writing in, man. The next comment comes to us from Re. And Re writes... Keeping children out of the forest is such a simple yet powerful metaphor and inarguably the most important theme of the entire story. Yeah. Mr. Bross is the most decent, pure character in AOT. He could have reacted out of revenge or anger like Flock, who definitely would have tossed Gabby and Falco off the airship mm. if Jean hadn't told him not to. But instead, he chose compassion and stopped another cycle of violence and hatred from continuing. You get a 100 as well, Re. Yeah. Yeah, beautifully stated, Re. Or Ray. Ray. I don't know. You are a ray of sunshine. Oh. We'll go with that. Yeah, compassion begets compassion. Mm. And violence begets violence. Yeah. Do you think karma is involved with any actions that characters take in this show? like a supernatural karma or just revenge type mm, i guess just like if you do something good yeah do you think the good is gonna find you Oof. again because i'm thinking about the example that ray says here of jean telling them not to toss gabby and falco off of the airship right yeah that was a good deed that was a compassionate deed yeah they just killed or gabby just killed one of his closest comrades a sweet, sweet girl. Sweet soul. Did his karma return to him when Niccolo stopped him from drinking mm. the wine? That's a good point. You know, like, yep. I, I don't know what Isayama had in mind, but it yeah. seems like Jean's action deserved another action of compassion. Yeah. And he got that. Yeah. Even if it's just the smallest things. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, oh. but all throughout this series, we have seen characters do good deeds yeah. and end up getting eaten by Titans. <laughs> I know. That's what I'm saying. Is, is karma anywhere within this show? Because it is so unfair, Yeah, yeah. the overall storyline. Yeah. Good Everything question. else is unfair. All right. Thank you, Re or Ray. Yeah. I think Ray is going to lead us into this next episode here. That's our last comment. All right. So... 
We are on episode number 74. And will we be starting part two today? So I believe one person told us that part two starts on the third video we'll be watching today. Okay. Which also comes with a new intro. Intro. Yeah. Which also comes with some spoilers if we look too deep into it. Yeah. Which also comes with a tough decision on our end. Yeah. So we'll get to that when we get to it. Yeah. But um, right now, we're going to jump into episode number 74, everybody, and it's titled Soul Salvation. Come on now. Here we go. Let's go. Yoku meet okay, Jiku. Koringa water station of some rebel yokuba. Sekai to Kurabeba, Torikamo mita in Chisai. Water station of Koko Kara Tokoni Moikesuni, Shinuma de Koko de Kurasanaka Ikenai. Jiku, Omaiwa Koko Kara Detai to Monica. Is it Grisha and Dinah? Oh, oh boy. Oh boy, that's Grisha, right? That's Grisha, Jar. Uh, that makes me think again that this was Grisha's plan all along. Yeah. It's interesting the conversations he has with Zeke and those he has with Aaron. Yeah. I feel like somebody should compile those side by side. Yeah. Because it's two different worlds, but they're one in the same. Huh. Who is that la, guy? La, 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 la. La, 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 la. <sighs> Drink a sip of water before all hell breaks yeah. loose. survivor yeah great song fantastic song falco Jaeger. oh that's not falco is that zeke that's zeke oh we're going back right Saver. Okay. Interesting. So he's one of the brass. Damn. <laughs> Social Dance Club. Maybe that was its excuse for the restorations. Yeah. 
これが1200年前に起きたラーゴの惨劇大都市ラーゴはこの日のうちに消滅し信仰を続けた巨人によってモンテの三階とバレの惨禍が繰り広げられ何十万ものマーレ人がエルディア帝国に殺されたさらにラーゴからなんとか逃れた難民は道なき航路をさまよったしかしエルディア帝国はその退路に巨人を仕掛け夜明けと共に起き上がった巨人によってマーレ人が、うん、分かった人がいっぱい死んだんでしょうお父さんはちゃんと正しい歴史を教えているか、うん、エルディア人はマーレ人にひどいことをしたから僕たちはここで償わなくちゃいけないってジークは戦士になってマーレのために戦いたいのか僕は戦士になりたいさあもう寝ないとなそうだ今度は猫の家の本を読んであげましょうねやった Who's in that picture? Faye? Right, because this is Zeke looking at an old picture. This may be Grisha and Faye.、Mm. I don't know. All right, look at the way Zeke looks at the picture. Look. Yeah. Huh. Oh. You can tell he doesn't, he doesn't want to train for that. Right. He wants to play like any other kid. <laughs> Dang. So maybe this is how he developed the relationship with the person who was、uh, Mr. Sovereign. Yeah. Wow. Damn. The parallels between Aaron's experience are、right. also there, man. When Aaron was going to train. Uh oh, here's the baseball. And that's the dude. And this is where he first learned how to throw baseball, Jordan. This guy's the beast. Tom Saba. Tom Saba. Tom Saba. So happy. Oh, 
お前はマーレに必要ないと言ったはずだがなぜここにマーレへの忠誠を示しベルディアの罪を償うためです公開訓練に参加させてくださいIs that Grisha? That's Grisha, Joe. The stark contrast. Right. The definition of building connections. Yeah. But if he doesn't become one, the plan that Grisha has doesn't come to fruition. ダメ。バカらしくてやってられないよね。さばさんは何で戦士に巨人の謎を知りたかったからさ。私は研究者だからね。全ては始祖ユミルが何かと接触したことから始まるらしいが、私はその時に起きたことを知りたいのさ。
私は研究者だからね全ては始祖ユミルが何かと接触したことから始まるらしいが私はその時に起きたことを知りたいのさ寿命を縮めてでも巨人の記憶を探ろうと思うことねそんなことだから戦争じゃカラキシの役立たずだ<笑>だが巨人の神秘の前に憎しみや争いもくだらないよだからこの戦争ごっこに付き合ってられない私たちは似た者同士でこの世界じゃ珍しいまともな者同士なのさ<笑>これでよかったんだずっと収容区から出られなくたって生きてさえいれば。It's revealed,、mm -hmm. you know, and we get these flashbacks. Right? It confirms a lot of what we had discussed in the past about the relationship between Grisha and Zeke. Yeah. Wow, but Zeke, it seems like he, he's having a little crisis of his own. Yeah. You know, it's an impossible position to put a kid in. Yeah. You're wrong no matter what you do. Yep. But you're right no matter what you do as well. Right. <laughs> in someone's eyes. So it's an impossible position to be in. And I now have more compassion for our guy, Zeke. Right. And we're not even, we're halfway through this. What feels like an OVA, but it, it's an actual episode showing us Zeke's past. Yeah. I now have more compassion for a fellow blondie. I'm liking this episode so far, Doug.、Yeah. It's a good one. All right, we have an information available for public disclosure. It says Titan Research.、Okay. Research concerning the unique power of subjects of Ymir to become Titans. A field of study since the era of the Eldian Empire. It encompasses not only the biology of Titans themselves, but also the ideologies of Eldians who possess the power and how to deal with them. Though researched extensively over many years, the truth of Titans still remains a mystery.、Mm. Okay. Still remains a mystery. By the end of this series, are we going to get to any semblance of truth? <laughs>、like、just straight up. Truth. Well, who was it that said the only truth in this world is that there's no truth? Yeah. Who said that? I forget. I forget.、Yeah. Was it、uh, Kruger? Was it? I think it was Kruger. Yeah. That's a great question, man. Okay. We're in the hands of Himayama. Yeah. We are literally in his hands. 
We are the little pen in his hands. And uh, he can do whatever he wants. He can leave us with truth. Or he can leave us with the opposite. Why? Whatever. <laughs> um, something. Yeah. Okay. Let's keep it moving, everybody. Anything else? Nope. Airship. Oh, he told him, Jerry. Oh, damn. <laughs> Zeke seems to be at more peace. <laughs> Then this guy. Oh, it puts him in a bind. He said report them. Yeah. Damn. Damn. Mm. Impossible position. Impossible. Damn. Oh. It's a long lasting relationship. Yeah. Mm. Andy, what up? And the rest of the gang. Ooh. The anatomy of their bodies. Wow。Wait a ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっ
戦のちぎりを打ち破る方法だ。はかずのジーク。それは君だからこそ可能だ。Here we go, Jern. There you go. To try and draw out its power. Mm. So he's only the key, right? Of course, Jerry. So this is where he eats him. Father, yeah. Who's he calling his father there, Mr. Sun? Is this where he notices that it's his father? <laughs> this was in Marley? Yeah, we didn't see this. Or, I mean, we might have seen clips. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's where the title comes from, I imagine, right? Yeah. There's no greater salvation than never being born in this world. And we think about what his mother, the quote that his mother what she say? told him. Because he was born in this world. Oh, essentially yes. that yes. he's valuable. Right. Okay. There's no Greater salvation than never being born in this world. Mm. Keep moving forward. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. Oh my gosh. That's Zeke, right? Levi? うん。自分の体が咀嚼されるおとを聞きながら死ぬわけだ。お前にしちゃう。随分と安らかな死に方だろう。奪った仲間たちの命に比べてみれば。I feel like Aaron's about to pop up. 
What happened? What happened? Did the bomb go off? I think he just ignited but, it, right? Oh no. Ooh. What happened to Levi? I don't know. All right. What happened to Zeke? All right, no ending scene, right? <laughs> no, we saw it to be continued. All right, can we rewatch that one more time? Yeah. Just quickly. That was not a part of Levi's plan, right? It didn't look like it. He needs someone to eat Zeke. He right. can't have him die. Yeah, right. his movement. And look at Levi's eyes. Right here. Yeah, surprise. And the horse Damn. is caught on fire. The horse. Okay. Nah, Levi ain't going out like that. Yeah, I don't I don't think Levi's dead. He ain't going out like that. Yeah, this is what Isayama does, right? Uh, an episode full of flashbacks and information, and then 10 seconds at the very end, <laughs> leaving us with a cliffhanger. Yeah. Yeah. How'd you feel about this episode, man? Oof. It was a touching moment between Zeke and Aaron a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. I sort of liked that moment. Yeah. Uh, I, as you mentioned, Jordan, just... The more and more we learn about these characters and yeah. their lives and their childhoods, the more we are able to put ourselves in their shoes. Mm. They are making impossible decisions. Living in a world that, at least Aaron, would rather never have been born into. Yeah. You know, it's, it, yeah. it's a lose-lose. It's a lose-lose. Yeah. In a use, use. In a use, use. Until you can't use or lose anymore. Yeah. Until you either win or you die. Yeah. But you fight to live. And you live to win. And you got to eat every now and then. <laughs> and you got to eat. And it may as well be people. And, or Nicolo's food. True. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, I feel like this episode contained a lot of great quotes. Mm. Um, I didn't catch them all, but just, I don't know. I, I One quote that stuck out was, I looked for my dead son in you. Oh. And Saber said that to Zeke. Yeah. I looked for my dead son in you. All right, that made me look at this guy and, and feel his pain and feel his perspective. Yeah. Oh, in the image of his wife. Oh, and his, was that his son? I believe so. And the baseball, baseball right there. The baseball stuck out the most. I know we're looking at two, two deceased individuals, Jared. Yeah. But the baseball for me symbolized all of the hopes and dreams right. of not only the kid, but his wife and the family unit. And he picked the baseball up dripping in blood. That was a powerful scene. Yeah. right there i yeah. loved it yeah and the baseball also has been symbolizing play play you yes. know zeke has been infiltrated with information and forced to study during every waking hour hour of his life yeah and finally he gets to throw a baseball right yeah that's an important point that can be lost sure these are kids brother yep we took a course in a college called Child and Adolescent Development. Yes. And the one thing I always took away from that course 
was the importance and necessity of play yeah. for kids. If a child grows up and they don't get that ability to express themselves through play, their life as adults will be altered. Yeah. And that's just a, that's a fact. If they don't get to play, which many kids don't, Jerry, their life is going to be altered in the future. Yeah. And yeah, I love this baseball metaphor and imagery also like moving forward right a baseball you throw it you catch it you yeah. continue to throw it yeah and Sabra was the one who told Zeke to turn his parents in yes right it didn't just Zeke alone did not just make that decision he didn't want to yeah that would be impossible for a young boy to make yeah without you know having other voices in your head right Wow. Yeah, if this uh, episode wasn't titled Soul Salvation, it would have been would have been titled Impossible Position. Ooh. Impossible Position. Yeah. Or Impossible Decisions. Yeah. Because that is what Zeke was forced into. All right. Yeah, it also shows the importance and the um, influence of adults. Right? Like Mr. Sauver came through and really impacted Zeke's life. Zeke would have been a completely different person if he didn't meet Mr. Saba. He told him to rat his parents out. Yeah. He showed him love. He was the beast titan himself. I wonder what Zeke's life would have been like. Yeah. yeah. All right. It's time to find out where Levi is. Yeah. yeah. All right. And if Zeke is really blown up. Mm-hmm. Okay, everybody, thank you so much for watching this episode with us. Uh, please let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. What scenes stuck out to you? Uh, did you also feel that it was a sentimental moment between Zeke and Aaron? Two brothers that, according to Yelena, are going to reshape the world. Yeah. Let us know what you thought. No spoilers, only clarifications and thoughts. We'll see you soon, everybody. Thanks so much. We love you. Do not forget. Be kind. And keep an open mind. Peace. Peace.